You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. It's the Patriot League semifinals, first of two today here on CBS Sports Network. And we're in Hamilton, New York, where the six seeded Holy Cross Crusaders getting set to take on the two seed, the Colgate Raiders. And the winner of this game is going to move on to the championship game on Wednesday on CBS Sports Network and take on either Bucknell or BU. That game immediately following us. Hey folks, how are you? Jason Horowitz alongside Coach Mo Cacera. Happy to have you with us on this Sunday, just one week away from Selection Sunday. And Mo, Colgate beat Holy Cross twice this year and once was just 10 days ago. But you know what? Holy Cross went to the tournament two years ago as a nine seed, so that's not going to phase them today. Throw out the regular season records. Both of these teams have an opportunity. Two wins will get them to dance. Yeah, Colgate's coming off a win against Lafayette by 22. Will Raymond is their star, the true sophomore. He's the best player on this team. He really is. He can do a little bit of everything for this team. Inside, outside game, size, finishes around the basket, shoots over 40% from the three. Great range, plays some defense for this team. He will have to play well here at home for Colgate this afternoon. They have a well balanced offense on the other side for Holy Cross this is a team that's not one of the better offensive teams in the country but Mo in the win against Navy they shot a Patriot League tournament record 67 percent but it's the defensive guy in Jahiva Floyd that gets most of the attention Jahiva Floyd can dominate a game on defense over 60 blocks on the season he can change the game what he's doing on offense now though has really turned the tides for Holy Cross he finishes around the rim terrific athlete for Holy Cross it's the Patriot League semifinals, one week from Selection Sunday. One of these two teams hoping to be there in a week, but they got to win today first, and the opening tip is next. In the Patriot League, our playbooks look a little different. Here, we play to win in the field. In the classroom, and in the community. A competitive athletic experience with high academic standards. Back at Connor L. Court in Hamilton, New York, getting set for the first of two Patriot League semifinals. It is Colgate and it is Holy Cross. Jason Horwitz and Mocha Sarah, happy to have you with us as we take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Kubota. For Holy Cross, three freshmen in the starting lineups. They are good, they score a lot. Green, Butler, and Grandison combined for 45 of the win at Navy. For Colgate, O'Brien, Swapshire, Raymond, and Bat have started every game this year. And then freshman Jordan Burns has come on, certainly in the running for a freshman of the year in the Patriot League. Bill Carmen in his third season as head coach of the Crusaders two years ago, took what was a ninth-seeded team in the tournament all the way to the NCAA tournament. And then Matt Langle in his seventh season as head coach here at Colgate, having an historic season. A win today would be the record for Colgate with 19 wins in a season. We are underway and happy to have you with us on this Sunday, Mocasera. Both teams will change defenses, play some zone, play some man. Gonna be on the defensive end, the key here this afternoon. Holy Cross is a deliberate team. They're coming off a game in which they shot 67% in an 81-65 victory at Navy. They'll work it deep into the shot clock like they do here. Gets into the lane, and that's a jumper for Jacob Grandison, the freshman from Oakland, California. And that will go a long way for this young Holy Cross team. They'd like to score and then get into that three-quarter court pressure, go back to some zone. And Mo, it was just February 24th. It was the last game of the regular season. Colgate, Holy Cross right here. Colgate scored 12 in the first half. That was it. Dana Bat keeps control, and the junior from Fort Wayne, who's had a big junior season, or at least improvement, with the first bucket for the game. One of the unsung heroes on this team, his ability to finish around the rim, do all the little things for Colgate. Two meetings this year, Colgate won a ball 59-53, right here in 79-74 in Massachusetts. That's off, and the senior, Sean O'Brien, who was a career 38% three-point shooter, the leader of this Colgate team. You gotta back up a bit. Swampshire. He was O'Brien, very good three-point shooters. Will Raymond's a good three-point shooter as well. 
That's Swapshire, the triple. And an offensive rebound for Will Raymond. Colgate loves to shoot the three. They'll shoot a lot of them here this afternoon. Yeah, they take as many threes as anybody in the Patriot League. Swapshire had that one blocked by Floyd. That's his 66th block of the season, but Swapshire stayed with it and hits the two. Senior, big plays, has the ability to make big shots, but you see Jahava Floyd already with the block. And that's one of the biggest differences. Holy Cross, all about their freshman impact. Colgate, a lot of seniors on this team. Veteran players for Colgate. This is a big game, big home atmosphere. Raymond, and it's a 7-2 Colgate lead. And big three-point shooters, they love to shoot the three. Will Raymond can shoot it in transition. Conorel Court's not a big arena. It holds about 1,700. It's a good crowd today, and they're gonna have to weather that storm, Holy Cross. And it's loud in here, and another three is gonna bring the roof down. Raymond wanted it. Back door out to Swapshire. Raymond, great pass to Bad, who lost it out of bounds. And it'll stay with Colgate with 11 to shoot. Mo, how about your keys to this game, Mo? Team defense for Holy Cross. Young group, they're going to change defenses and value the ball. They can't turn it over on the road for Colgate. Shoot the three, keep shooting the three, and then post defense. Can they handle Jahava Floyd around the basket? They shoot 26 threes a game. They put it up a lot, but they make almost 10 a game. Five on the shot clock. And Burns well off the mark. So one of four from beyond the arc to start for Colgate. And that's the first turnover for Holy Cross. Grandison on the travel. And that's the other thing. Neither of these teams turn it over very much. And that's one of my keys, especially on the road. Got to take care of the basketball. That's one of the advantages for Colgate. Sean O'Brien, veteran point guard. He does not turn it over for the Patriot League Coach of the Year, Matt Langle. There he is. They were picked preseason fifth in the conference. An eight-game improvement already. They were a 10-win team last year. They are 18 and 12 the gate. Back out to O'Brien. That's a three. Caleb Green, freshman point guard for Holy Cross. Off to Austin Butler. Onto the deck, it's Burns, the freshman point guard for the Raiders. Raymond, the trailer, knocks it in. Very tough to defend. Threes in transition. Will Raymond. Under 10 to shoot. Floyd drives it back. But he traveled first. Will Raymond, second team all Patriot League, knocking in a couple of threes. He's got Colgate up by eight early. And you're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota, right here on CBS Sports Network. Uh, visit KubotaUSA.com today by Coaches vs. Cancer. Join the NABC and the American Cancer Society in the Coaches vs. Cancer three-point challenge. And by AT&T. Well, two years ago, it really was amazing when Holy Cross beat Lehigh to win the Patriot League title. They clinched the tournament bid with a record of 14 and 19, meaning they were 10 and 19 going into the Patriot League. They were the nine seed in the tournament because they were a five and 13 team in conference. But Mo, Holy Cross during that year two years ago did not win a road game in conference and then they won four in eight days to win the Patriot League tournament. The magic of March, you never know. Play well this time of year, string a couple wins together. That Holy Cross run was unbelievable. We were a big part of it. CBS Sports Network, four road wins in a row for that guy who knows how to win some basketball And that games. was his first year taking over at Holy Cross. This is his third year for Bill Carmody. They went on to beat Southern in the first four. It was Holy Cross's first NCAA tournament win 
since 1953, and it just so happened that it was on a team with a losing record. Here early, Holy Cross has to weather the storm. They've had three turnovers. It's led to six points for Colgate, and Will Raymond's got a couple of threes. Back goes to work on Grandison. Raymond left alone again. And that's a tough guard for Jahava Floyd because he's got to go out and guard Raymond on the perimeter, which does take away his shot blocking ability. Starters all still on the floor for both teams. Benson, floater over the outstretched arm of Raymond. And Benson has been part of the reason Holy Cross has started to play better. Out with an injury, he's a floor leader, got some experience, nice finish there in the lane. Yeah, he missed three games at the end of January with that injury. O'Brien, deep on the three. So they're firing, but they're not hitting. So Holy Cross has the opportunity because Colgate's getting good looks for three. Colgate's a team that has shot almost 800 threes this season. They will continue to get them up. Jahiva Floyd on the cut and the hammer. We talk so much about his defense, defensive player of the year in the Patriot League, but it's been his offense shooting almost 66% from the field. And that's good enough for sixth best in the country. He's really been, he's one of the most improved players in the country. He was a one-point-a-game scorer last year. He was an energy guy coming for defense. That's a different story now. Five on the shot clock for Swapshire. He's doubled off. Bat doesn't see it, and it's going to be a shot clock violation on Colgate. Here's Floyd right here. Watch him. Watch him move without the basketball here as this offense of attack here for Holy Cross. He slips there, nice pass, he moves without the basketball, and let me tell you, Jason, he can finish. Six foot eight, 225 pounds, grew 10 inches in high school. First offer was Holy Cross by Kevin Driscoll. And Bill Carmody said, hey, he was happy that he wanted to stick that out and stay at Holy Cross, and as long as he worked hard, he'd be able to get Bill Carmody's Princeton system and he certainly has done that. One on the shot clock. Floyd sees it, hoists. Uh, he had to try and bail out Grandison because Jacob Grandison, the freshman, had no idea the shot clock was winding down. And you see Colgate here, they'll play at two tempos. They'll push it, but they'll also take some time in the half court. Raymond's double team keeps it himself and scoops it in. One of the underrated things about Will Raymond is his size. He's got long arms and can really finish in awkward ways around the rim. This is Austin Butler, another one of those freshmen for Holy Cross. Jordan Robertson, who just checked into the game for Colgate with a great defensive play. Francisco Amiel also now in for Colgate. Cuts to the basket, Bat doesn't see him. And Floyd swipes it away. Fast break opportunity for the Crusaders. No on the lay-in, but free throws coming up for Caleb Green. Will Raymond, all-league player here in the Patriot League, sophomore, so improved. And you see there, that's what I was talking about. His ability, because of his long arms, he can stretch the ball out, finish around the rim. He's crafty. We've already seen him shoot the three. But how about Floyd's defense on the other end? He really created that turnover. Dana Bat goes to the bench. Sam Lindgren checks in for Colgate, and Sam Lindgren has given them big minutes the last couple of weeks. Caleb Green, one of those true freshmen, splits the pair. And now he will go to the bench, replaced by Matt Zignorski. And you know, we talked about the fact that Holy Cross had that run two years ago. But Zignorski is really the only player on this Holy Cross team that played any significant role in that. And as a freshman, he scored three and a half points a game. So in terms of them trying to do it again now, it's not like they rely on the guys that know what they did two years ago. Raymond is on fire, his third three of the first eight minutes. Well, Colgate's going to keep relying on him. 
He is a tough guard, plays inside and out. We've seen that the last two baskets he scored. He's already got 11. Floyd finds the cutter and Benson is fouled. Well, Will Raymond, second team all Patriot League, but he's playing better than that today. Will Raymond doing a little bit of everything, 41% from the three, and he's got Colgate rolling in Hamilton. More points than they did against Holy Cross eight days ago in the first half. And make sure to join the Coaches versus Cancer three-point challenge. Join your team, make a pledge, beat cancer. Pledge now at threepointchallenge.org. Well, Will Raymond uh, is challenging his team mode to make some threes. He's got three of them in the first half. And he's been fabulous. Four for five from the field, three for four from the three. Great range, long, can finish around the rim, done a little bit of everything. The New York City native having some fun here this afternoon. And you see he is a tough guard inside and out. Keep shooting him. Will's dad is a uh, Graham Raymond. He's a journalist for the New York Daily News. Asked him what he writes about. He writes about a little bit of everything. There's some stories about John Legend. There's some stories about New York City police. He writes a little bit about everything for the New York Daily News. talked a lot about his recruitment and somebody who's gotten better, been a big piece for this team, but also building the program, and that's what Matt Langle's just done a fabulous job of. Good cut, that's a find. Matt Zignorski had the open shot, but then he pushed off on the miss. And so that's the foul on Holy Cross. It's their first. Been a pretty clean game. Fouls were just one on each team, and you mentioned Matt Langle. It really has been a historic season here. Uh, at Colgate. 18 wins ties their most in school history. They'd break that today. They'd also break the record for most wins here in Hamilton if they win today. 13 would be a school record. And, and remember, this is a team that was coming off a 10 and 22 season a year ago. And this is a team that's got some young pieces, got some veterans, and got some guys that have really improved. Floyd back out on the block, his second. Robertson, though, finishes. I mentioned to you off the air, Robertson is one of the real unsung heroes on this team because he comes off the bench and he can score. How about the defensive presence of Jahava Floyd, though? Off the bench, Connor Nego long on the three. And this is danger time for Holy Cross because we mentioned they're shooting a lot better the last six games, but in general, they are not a high-powered attack. So you do have to keep Colgate in striking distance. Ferguson off the bench, knocks in a three. Jack Ferguson had 20 earlier this year against Syracuse. And the freshman from Fort Wayne gives Colgate its largest lead. Timeout, Holy Cross, down by 13. So, can we count you in? Colgate moving so well without the basketball. You see Ferguson right here, and watch the ball movement. Colgate moves the ball, side, top side. They come back, Ferguson rolls up right here. And what would you expect from a young man from Indiana? He can shoot it, Jason. Yeah, it's what he's done his entire life. <laughs> Holy Cross goes to Jahiva Floyd, and he's fouled. Amiel on the reach in. Holy Cross hasn't had a bucket in four minutes. And so, you know, again, as you mentioned, we talked about Jahiva Floyd, and he's already got two blocks in this game. He's two away from tying the school record for single season. But it is his offense that maybe is as improved, because he was always lengthy. He was always a good defender. But he is a 67% shooter now, which is sixth in the nation. And a guy that, you know, he was an energy guy last year. That's all he was. He's become one of the better players in the conference now. I've watched him over the last three years covering the Patriot League get better and better and better, and that's a lot of credit to Bill Carmody and his staff. And let's give them credit. Out of that timeout, go inside, get something going to the foul line so you can set your defense. Let's see and watch now moving forward if Colgate chooses to double team in the post. Question though, how do they stop the three? Because you know Colgate's gonna shoot them and if they're hitting them, there's not much Holy Cross can do. Watch Holy Cross in the zone really push out past the three and right there, run people off the line. Raymond left alone. It's batted around and Amiel the offensive rebound. And I'll tell you what, it's loud in here. It is loud, students are having fun. This is what college basketball is all about. That's the football team that's sitting right there. 
on the baseline. And it's knocked away, and it'll be back to Holy Cross. That is the Patriot League co-champions. They tied this year with Lehigh. Now, Lehigh went on to the FCS playoffs by virtue of beating Colgate in the tiebreaker, but they are here, and you know why they're going to be loud? Because they have 6 a.m. practice off tomorrow. They make an impact tomorrow, today. <laughs> Nice coaching right there. I think they, so. They got here early. They've been loud. And congratulate to them on a terrific season. And, and it's so close to the floor, too, on that end. And that's traveling. And there it is. Speaking of Patriot League, the co-champions, led by Coach Hunt, 2017 Colgate. And again, the loss to Lehigh is why the uh, Lehigh went on to the FCS playoffs. But I mean, this is a proud football tradition. Colgate's had some players of the year, Walter Payton player of the year candidates recently in the last 10 years. So it is a good football program. And the basketball program, you know, look, they've been to the NCAA tournament twice. Kind of been a struggle since then. Matt Langle's done a pretty good job turning it around. They've got some player of the year candidates on this roster right here moving forward. Matt Langle has, as I mentioned, not, not only put together a good team, but a terrific program here in Hamilton. Matt Zignorski just picked up his second foul on the double team. And this is what Colgate likes to do. Throw the ball inside, make the defense collapse, and then kick it back out for threes. Watch them continue to do it. Holy Cross will look to double in that post, make it difficult. So mostly subs on the floor right now for Colgate. Will Raymond, the only starter in the ball game. And Sam Lindgren is fouled. That's Matt Thaw off the bench for Holy Cross. He picks up his first. And Holy Cross playing a matchup zone, so there's some difficult slides. Watch Will Raymond for Colgate start inside and pop out. Very tough to guard. The double team. Good job by Holy Cross off the out of bounds. And Aviel racing back for the steal. That's what you have to do this time of year, extra hustle efforts. Robertson on the drive, and Jordan Robertson, the senior from New Jersey, gonna go back to the free throw line for Colgate. This is what you have to do to win in March. Hustle plays, extra effort. Ami will turn the ball over on the other end, stayed with it, didn't give up, didn't get frustrated. Throws it ahead, and his team is back on the foul line. Watch Colgate change defenses here. They like to go to a little 1-3-1, one, one, put Raymond up top off of a made free throw. 12-point lead for Colgate with the free throw. The toughest sport on dirt takes the stage tonight at 8 Eastern for the bad boy Mowdown. 25th PBR Unleash the Beast series continues right here on CBS Sports Network. Now, can I call that because it's a mow down? I, 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 I was wondering to go that. call that. Yeah, well, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a far trip from Hamilton, though. There aren't really easy flights out of Hamilton, New York. <laughs> the, uh, the regional airport doesn't fly very far. The mow down, that's going to be my new hashtag. Do you have a private plane waiting for you to get to the mow down? I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's later. Today, though, triple header college basketball here on CBS Sports Network. This the first of the two Patriot League semifinals. Bucknell and BU immediately when we're done. Houston playing today as well. Taking on UConn. That's at 4 Eastern. The Cougars 25th in the national rankings. That foul on Sean O'Brien. So that is the second on the senior. And so they may lose their captain and he goes to the bench. And that's a mistake by Colgate. Seven on the shot clock. You don't want to foul in the post. Make Floyd make a tough shot over defense. Biggest difference in the game. The fact that Colgate has hit four triples. Holy Cross is 0 of 2. Grandison, tough shot, but he's fouled by Amiel. So foul starting to pile up a little bit on Colgate, and that'll send us to break. Get in there, fellas. Chance to dance. Colgate football and the Raiders. Rolling. You're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. Today at 4 Eastern, when CBS Sports Network brings you a regular season finale in the American Athletic Conference, 
Number 25, Houston, looks to finish on a high note when they host UConn right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. And the Cougars' resume looks like this. 23-6, uh, and six, RPIs in the top 20. But most importantly, and this is the phrase that people need to know heading into Selection Sunday, what did you do against quad one teams? Six and two is very impressive. That's a great number. I had Houston earlier in the year against Arkansas. They're playing with also without a home arena, much like Cincinnati has this year. So what they've done playing off campus as they're building a new facility, really impressive. This is a tough team. They guard, they defend, and quad one, six and two. They're in, baby. And remember, quad one, what'd you do at home against teams in the RPI top 30? What'd you do on neutral floor teams in the RPI top 50? What'd you do on the road? Teams in the RPI top one, uh, 75. So it kind of varies and it changes and it still works around the RPI, but it's a little bit different than what we used to say, which is just one through 50. What was your record one through 50? What was your record 51 through 100? I'm just glad you're here to break all that down. That Syracuse degree helped me through that. I probably should have had something so that people could have followed. <laughs> And Holy Cross, back to this three-quarter court pressure. Take some time off the shot clock. They're quick, active in the passing lanes. Try to frustrate this Colgate group and then back into their matchup zone. And again, the winner today takes on either Bucknell or BU. Game immediately following us right here on CBS Sports Network. Starters back into the ball game for Colgate. Three on the shot clock. Swapshire rolls out. But there's Robertson again. Big minutes off the bench for the senior. Burns, great dish to Swapshire. He blew the layup. Now Holy Cross just kind of hanging around, hanging around. And they knock in a three. Austin Butler. Really good looking young freshman, great range. And isn't that interesting? A missed layup and a three on the other end. That's a five point swing for Holy Cross. And that's the Crusaders' first made triple of the ball game. Amiel stays in for Colgate. The backup point guard was Sean O'Brien on the bench with two fouls. Burns the miss, but Amiel another offensive rebound. Amiel's kind of been everywhere for them, doing all the little things for Colgate. Important possession here for them, 23 seconds on the shot clock. Amiel extra pass, Swapshire in the corner. And Butler's got the board. You know, six offensive rebounds for the gate. They haven't really been able to convert on those. That's the way Colgate wants to play, keep shooting threes. Now Holy Cross runs this version of the Princeton offense. shot from Caleb Green. Out and running. Great hustle. Austin Butler. But here's the here's that point where you were just talking about a huge momentum swing possibly. And this is the reason I'm not coaching anymore. This used to drive me crazy. Five point swings. A missed layup. You got to finish around the rim. And then Holy Cross, this may be key for them. Throw the ball ahead. They got great range. Deep range. Five point swing. Nice looking young freshman there for the Crusaders. Austin Butler tied for the team lead coming into the game. 37 made threes. Amiel is not a good three-point shooter and that off the mark. But as you can see, Colgate will live and die and continue to shoot threes. As I mentioned, almost 800 attempts on the season. Well, and Will Raymond's three of five. The rest of his team is one of ten from beyond the arc for Colgate. Grandison. Jordan Burns here. Will Raymond's got to touch the basketball and get a block. He wants it right there at the free throw line. Amiel drives, kicks it out to Burns. He'll take the three. And it's tapped out and it'll stay with a fresh shot clock for Colgate. And this is different too, Mo. When you think of the zone, the one that Bill Carmody plays, it's not the one like they play up the road in Syracuse. So it's different positions on the floor that you have to get to. Very unconventional. So if you're watching, it has a lot of man-to-man -man principles. They'll guard the man in their area. They will switch. They will talk. It's something that gets better as the season goes on. And Bill Carmody loves to change defenses. That's the middle of the zone for Dana Batten. He's trapped and he's tied up. So the possession arrow will stay with Colgate. Very impressive Holy Cross right now playing defensively without Jahiva Floyd on the floor. Colgate likes to throw that ball in that elbow area. That's a great way 
to get in and then pass out of there if you're bad. You gotta be strong with the basketball. Rip it through. Don't let Holy Cross get in there and get a jump ball. Right, interesting decision here for Matt Langle. He's got O'Brien back on the floor with two fouls. He is one of the leaders of this team. It's a balanced offense, but he is certainly the leader for this team, a senior from Lafayette Hill, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philly. Caleb Green, bounce pass in the corner. It's a three for four, and it's down to a five-point deficit. And that's a concept they work on in their offense, that baseline drive and long bounce pass. Caleb Green, the freshman, delivers the pass. Now, it's not a quick spurt. But it is an 8-0 run for Holy Cross. Back, slips to the basket. Double team, extra pass, Swapshire the three. And he still cannot buy a bucket. And that's why Sean O'Brien's back in the game right now with two fouls for Colgate. He's the calming influence. He's the guy that's going to get the right people's shots. Colgate now. Got to sit out of guard through the whole possession. Drive right past Raven. It's Austin Butler. Can you see that young freshman's confidence growing? A deep three and then a great drive. Ten point a game scorers bringing him back in. Now Raymond's threes won't fall. O'Brien saves it off the leg. And Mo, they worked on that in warm-ups. They worked on running into the sideline to save it. But Holy Cross on a 10-0 run. Holy Cross dribble drive, pass, shooting the basketball well. And Austin Butler, the freshman, trying to get to Crew Claters back in it here in Hamilton. <laughs> Watching his team give up a 10 0 run to Holy Cross. Hey, coming up on ATT at the half, Adam Zucker, Swin Cash, John Rothstein. First half analysis of this one. Get you ready for Bucknell and VU. Plus scores and highlights from around the country, including the Wichita State-Cincinnati matchup, uh, which is over on CBS. It's all coming up at the half. Plus, they'll get you ready for the team's punching tickets to the NCAA tournament. Now, Murray State did that last night. The Racers go into their first tournament since 2012, the one seed in the Ohio Valley. Congratulations to that squad. Uh, two championships today on CBS, both the Missouri Valley, and Loyola hasn't been there since 85. And then the Big Ten. Michigan and Purdue, remember, that was moved up a week so they could play at Madison Square Garden. What kind of effect as a coach do you think that'll have on the teams? Michigan and Purdue and Ohio State, Michigan State. We'll see if Nebraska or Penn State gets in, but whoever gets in about having two weeks off. Well, it's a long rest period, which you're not used to, but there's some magical coaches there who know how to push the right button, so they'll rest their bodies. I think in many ways it can help, but for a team like Michigan, who's just playing so well right now, I'm sure John Beeline just wants to keep playing. And remember, last year Michigan went four games in four days after that plane crash to win the tournament all the way to the Sweet 16. Will Raymond stops the 10-0 run. They hadn't scored in over four and a half minutes. Speaking of coaching, that's coaching right there. <laughs> Go to your best player, draw a play up out of the timeout. Will Raymond, nice offense there, Matt Langle. He's got 13 to lead the way for Colgate. Throws it away, and Raymond the steal. And it's really been the turnovers that have hurt Holy Cross. That's number seven. In the corner, Swapshire, no. Raymond, the offensive board. Jordan Swapshire is 0 of 6 from beyond the arc. He's a 40% three-point shooter. Well, he's going to keep shooting him, and he can score in bunches. Not going to be shy. Burns. And that's tipped on out of bounds off of Colgate. Will Raymond has been everywhere for the Raiders this afternoon. Needed a big play, you go to your best player. Foul line area where he's good. Jab, settle the defense, shot fake, a little bit of everything. Nice soft touch around the rim and terrific set play out of the timeout by Matt Langle. 13 points this afternoon. He led Colgate this year at 14 and a half points per game. Second team all Patriot League. And a guy that has just burst onto the scene, a year of prep school, and then last year, right away, he had a 26-point performance at Penn State in their fourth game last year, right before Thanksgiving, and he never slowed down. He led the team in scoring last year as a freshman. Be one of the favorites for Patriot League Player of the Year next year, no question. Austin Butler again! He's come on! And Butler's got seven. 
stronger, gaining strength. Austin Butler has put up some big numbers throughout the season. That's a big-time drive by the young freshman. Burns takes it himself to Hiva Floyd, the big defensive presence in the middle. And Holy Cross has a chance to tie with a three. Benzin will circle it back out. Grandison, one of the three starting freshmen for the Crusaders. Butler is one of the others. Drives it at the lane, and Swampshire gets it out of there. Raymond. He is showing his entire repertoire this afternoon. Nice job by Jordan Burns, the freshman guard that time. Not forcing it, swinging the basketball, get Will Raymond a touch. Raymond cuts off Green. Floyd's got the size advantage on Lindgren. The double comes, and that's turnover number eight for Holy Cross. I mentioned Burns, picks up, throws the ball, swing the basketball, make the defense move. Shot fakes, such an important play in college basketball. Will Raymond just knows how to use it, get the defense in the air. Holy Cross back to this three-quarter court pressure. O'Brien checks back in, he's got the ball. He's played sporadically with two fouls here in the first half. Matt Langle's done a great job to get him off the floor on the defensive end when he can. Nine on the shot clock, under a minute to go in the first half. And that's a foul on Grandison. Jacob Grandison picks up his first. Still only five fouls for both teams, so not quite in the bonus, but he'll go to the, be the bench for Connor Nigo. So they add a little bit of size in the last 58 seconds. And he'll go to the bench because that's a mistake. Fouling off the block there, no need there. You're in good defensive position. Got to play without foul. O'Brien uses the head fake, drives all the way to the basket, and he's rejected. Green takes it coast to coast, and it's blocked. But he's fouled on the way up. Sam Lindgren whistled for the arm. Well, you can tell this game's got some postseason feel. There's a block party here today, throwing the ball ahead. And Caleb Green, young freshman, Holy Cross. Woo! Well, the whistle was that Lindgren got him with the arm on the side of the head. So the freshman who had 15 against Navy on Thursday, it's the first. And, you know, we talked about the fact that both these teams play with freshman point guards. Although Colgate has a couple of guys that handle the basketball. Five foot ten freshman from New Hampshire to start all 30 games this year. He came in and took over this offense right away. Done a nice job. Prep school kid went to Proctor Academy. And Jordan Burns, the other freshman guard for Colgate. Another prep school kid went to the Kent School. I'll tell you what, they've got a lot of minutes ahead of them in the Patriot League. Colgate's largest lead was 13. They had a 22-9 advantage in this ball game with 10 minutes to play. They've scored four points in the last nine and a half minutes. So 20 on the shot clock here. Will Raymond needs to get a touch if you're Colgate. He's got it now. And he drives the paint. Turn around. Hook shot, it's off. And an opportunity for Holy Cross to hold for one shot, and that's exactly what Bill Carmody tells his team. Now you'll see them spread the court. No post presence. Jahave Floyd with a little flat ball screen up top, see if they can get something going to the basket. Last time this game was tied was two apiece. They get it to Floyd going to the basket. Did he beat the shot clock? They counted on the floor but they're gonna take a look at it. Well, they did exactly what you said. The question is, did Jahiva Floyd beat the buzzer? Well, just like I wanted to draw it up, here comes the flat ball screen, but he slips it. Watch him dive to the basket right here. Great hands and catch. And we'll have to check this here with the shot clock and timing, how quickly he can get it off. I think it's no good. It was that hesitation on the right side of the basket to take a look one more time. And I'm with you, his still hand his is hand. definitely out the ball. Still in his hand. Split second there, but still in his hand, no basket. And the officials wave it off. So still a three-point game. Jahiva Floyd could not beat the buzzer.
but Holy Cross finished the half on a 14 to four run. The defense shut down Colgate. What's up, baby? What's up, baby? And so it's a ball game heading to the half. 26-23 in Hamilton, and we'll send you back to our New York City studios for AT&T at the half right after these messages. Patriot League Championship on the line, and it's a three-point game in the semifinal here in Hamilton at the half. Jason Horowitz, Coach Mo Cacera, happy to have you back with us here in upstate New York. Uh, Colgate looked like they were going to run away with it. They couldn't miss from three. Then all of a sudden they couldn't hit, and it's a three-point game, Mo. Holy Cross's defense turned it up. Colgate's going to continue to shoot the three, and they need to shoot it well here at home to win yeah. this afternoon. Yeah, just four points the final ten minutes of that first half as we take a look at the first half stats. Brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. A lot of things that work in Colgate's favor. Nine-nothing in the offensive rebounds. But the fact that they took 32 shots compared to 16 for Holy Cross, but they couldn't hit the three, and they couldn't convert those offensive rebounds into points, but they did have Will Raymond going well. Well, Will Raymond has had a terrific first half. Six for 11 from the field, three for six from the three. You see this trailer three. He's really good at trailing the play. Got great range, 15 points in the first half. He can finish, and he's got to score big here in the second half. On the other side for Holy Cross, they were starting to struggle, but then one of those freshmen came on, Austin Butler. Hey, the pride of Latrobe, PA. He shot this one from Pennsylvania, and he got a goal, and it was that transition three, strong drive, nice looking young freshman for the cross. And I remember Holy Cross is a team that has 54% of its points from freshmen. Now, Jordan Swapshire for Colgate is a fifth year senior. He is their second leading scorer on the season. He is a 41% three point shooter, but he's been struggling the last three games from the floor, Mo. And he is 0 of 6 from beyond the arc in this ball game. That is not going to phase Colgate. They're going to keep shooting it. They took 19 threes in the first half. Look for him to shoot as many in the second. Holy Cross. That's Butler blocked by Raymond. So a good defensive effort right off the bat. And remember, right before the end of the half, Holy Cross thought they scored a bucket to get within one. But Jahiva Floyd layup was after the buzzer. So it is still a three-point game, 30 seconds here into the second half. And we talked in the open, throw out the regular season, throw out the first half. You've got 20 minutes to play to go to the tournament now. Raymond left alone. So now four of 20 for Colgate from beyond the arc. Now they shoot a lot of threes, but they shoot 25 a game. So 20 at this point is a lot. Yeah, they're on pace for almost 40, probably a little too much. But Holy Cross now again, this version of the Princeton offense is going to take some time off the clock. Grandison, and we're tied a minute into the second half. A lot of credit to Pat Benson there. He took the ball, pulled it back out, forced them to run some offense. Nice job by Holy Cross. Holy Cross had a 2-0 lead. They've been working uphill the entire way since then. Lot behind the perimeter, and they're four on the shot clock for O'Brien. Trying to do it all himself. Foot on the line, and another offensive rebound. Swapshire tries again, and finally hits one. It's time for seniors to perform. He doesn't want this to be his last game. Colgate continues to get open looks from beyond the arc. Win today, you go to the Patriot League Championship game on Wednesday. Benson drives all the way to the lane, and he lost it. And Jordan Burns going to bring it back out. Swapshire. Ooh, wanted another one. Raymond, he is all by himself for three. And it's a foul called on Holy Cross. It is on Patrick Benson. That's his first. Swapshire gets a clean look here. See him pop out. He's got range. He's not shot the ball well in the first half, but that doesn't matter. He'll continue to shoot. Another staggering stat. Nine offensive rebounds for Colgate in the first half, and they went to the glass again there and got a foul. Well, Will Raymond hit, hit three of his first four triples. He's missed his last four, and they've been open looks, too. Burns all the way to the bucket, and he gets the bounce. You see Colgate now running some of their man offense against this matchup switching Holy Cross zone. Offensive foul called on the Crusaders. 
It's on Caleb Green, but let's go back to Jordan Burns, the true freshman, his first points of the afternoon. Jordan Burns may be the favorite for Rookie of the Year in the first part of the Patriot League season there. Take what the defense gives you. Don't settle. Drive the ball to the basket. Great finisher for Colgate. Alex Petrie from Lafayette went on to win Patriot League Rookie of the Year. But Burns was third in the conference among freshmen behind Petrie and Sam Iorio from American. Burns again gets to the bucket, and he earns his way to the free throw line. Well, how about the all-rookie team here in the Patriot League? And a couple in this game, Austin Butler, who we've seen have a big performance today, and Jordan Burns on there as well. And you're also going to get a chance to see Walter White in the next game coming up. BU with an upset over Lehigh, playing regular season champion Bucknell right after us. Tip just after 2 Eastern right here on CBS Sports Network. Jason Knapp and Pete Gillen will have that call. And remember, the Patriot League Championship Wednesday night right here on CBS Sports Network is on the floor of the higher C. So if Colgate wins today, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is their last home game, which is huge because they are having their best home season in school history. And let me tell you something, if Bucknell loses and Colgate wins, this place will be Bonkers on Wednesday. Floyd keeps it one on one with Dana Bat. Works to the left shoulder. Great offensive patience from Jahiva Floyd. And that is improvement right there. Bat with a defensive breakdown, letting him come back to his strong left hand. Terrific finish by Floyd. He had 20 in the road upset at Navy. He was eight of nine from the floor. He's only gotten three shots today, but he does have six points. Deep in the shot clock again, Swapshire lets the defender fly by, and Dana Bat with the 11th offensive rebound. Question, can Colgate capitalize on it? Colgate's got to move without the basketball. When the ball goes in the post, they got to get some cutters, get some action, too much standing around. This is Burns for three. Raymond, offensive putback, and it's last touch by Colgate. And there's the presence of Floyd. He didn't even jump there, and he completely disrupted Wayman because you're worried about the shot blocker. And Mo Colgate's three-point struggles continue. They were four of 19 from beyond the arc in the first half. They are one of five from beyond the arc here in the second half. Benson, dish to Floyd, switches to his left hand. And he was contested in the air. Timeout coming on the next whistle. And there is that whistle. It's Colgate basketball. Can Jahiva Floyd keep Holy Cross in this game? Post presence. Finish around the rim, shooting over 60% for the season. Jahava Floyd, Defensive Player of the Year. Terrific for Holy Cross. You're watching Brad. Basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Jersey Mike's. A sub above. Well, Donald Foyle went to high school in Hamilton, New York, and he played his college ball right here at Colgate. And he led the Raiders to two NCAA tournaments, 95 and 96. He was a third team AP All-American in 1997. And the two-time Patriot League Player of the Year went on to play 13 years in the NBA. His number hangs in the rafters here at Cotterell Court. And you know, it has been 22 years since Colgate has been to the NCAA tournament. They lost to UConn uh, by just nine in that 1996 tournament. But no, they haven't really been to the Patriot League championship game that often. It's been seven years since they've been to that. Speaks volumes about what Matt Langle and his staff, the administration here at Colgate have done. Dana Bat on the inside. Interesting, with Floyd out of the game, Colgate chooses to go inside to Bat. Had a great opportunity to finish there without the shot blocker in the game. I said eight years since their last championship game, 2008, so it's been 10 years since Colgate's last championship game appearance. On the drive, no whistle, and Matt Fogg gets the lay-in. Unexpected scoring there for Holy Cross, and no call on the charge.
Burns dishes for Raymond. Good defensive play, not giving away the easy bucket. Back to the offense for the Crusaders. And you see the rip through and drive on the baseline there. Sean O'Brien thought he was set outside the line, no call. Hey, this is going to be a physical 14 and a half minutes. Nothing easy around the rim, no easy calls. You've played and worked all summer, all fall, all season to get to this point. And Will Raymond's an 81% free throw shooter as Butler checks back in. Austin Butler really brought Holy Cross back into the game when they were down 22-9. But if you're Colgate, you had a 22-9 lead nine and a half minutes into the ball game. And you have scored 12 points since then. And the only reason I bring up the number 12, now 13, Mo, is because it was February 24th, the last regular season game in conference play, when Matt Langle's team only scored 12 points in the entire first half right here against Holy Cross. Now, they came back to win, but he said, hey, look, sometimes the shots just don't fall, and that's happening right now. It is, and that speaks volumes also about Holy Cross, and that's why Holy Cross is here right now. They're a young team, but they can guard and they defend. Six on the shot clock. Butler, deep triple. And that guy can shoot. That's a mistake by Will Raymond. Maybe the first one he's made all night. You've got to run him off the line. Don't let him get his hands and feet set. Butler with a deep three. Swampshire. His struggles continue, but Sam Lindgren, the junior with the putback. Another offensive rebound, number 14 for Colgate. 14 nothing. Offensive rebounds. That's a three. Matt Faw has had a huge impact off the bench. Little unsung hero time back to back there for both teams. He scores four a game. He has eight here in the Patriot League semifinal. You know, you mentioned it. 14 offensive rebounds to none and 13 to nothing second chance points for Colgate. Burns on the drive. Fall met him at the rim. Put back no, and Butler has it and he's fouled. Lindgren picks up the foul as Butler ripped through. Well, Austin Butler has shown us he has deep range. That's a mistake by Colgate. Got to run him off the line, and by that mean, make him put the ball on the deck. And then you see nice catch and shoot there for Holy Cross. Little unexpected offense from the big fellow. Well, and Matt Faw's another one of those freshmen. We mentioned at the top, Holy Cross starts three freshmen, but Faw, Nigo, they all come off the bench. They're freshmen as well. Coach Carmody loves guys that can catch, pass, and shoot. Floyd drives, lays it in, and Holy Cross, it's first lead since it was 2-0. The difference has been Colgate's defense. It has not been as good to start the game. They got to generate some offense to get going on defense. See, if Colgate stops trying as many threes, they've taken 25. Swapshire. Maybe that's a better range. Interesting. He's hit two really difficult shots. That mid-range jumper, and he's missed some wide open threes. Back to Floyd. Patriot League Defensive Player of the Year has got eight points today. Green falling to the floor, but a whistle and a foul. It's called on Sean O'Brien, and that is the third on the senior. And you see Floyd here with the finish using his right hand. And Jordan Swapshire, the senior, shot fake, a little in between. That's a really difficult shot to make, but hey, it's his time. He doesn't want this to be his last game. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Holy Cross change defenses here in the next couple minutes. Maybe go to some zone or some 1 3 1, which they'd like to play in the second half. Benson is tied up on the drive. Back to Holy Cross. And that'll send us to a break. We have a one-point game in the first of two Patriot League game with a trip to the Patriot League Championship on the line.
And it's time for today's three-point challenge update brought to you by Coaches versus Cancer. And it was all about Will Raymond and Colgate early. Well, Colgate's taken 25 threes, five for 25. They've gone cold. It's really been Holy Cross making some threes here in the second half. Got them back in the game. Yeah, they are three of three in the second half. They've hit five of eight in the ball game. You can join the Coaches versus Cancer three-point challenge. Join your team, make a pledge, and beat cancer. And, you know, that's the difference. We talked about at the half, the fact that at that time, Colgate had doubled up Holy Cross in shot attempts, 32 to 16, but it was only a three-point game. And, you know, the shot advantage is a 21-shot advantage for Colgate, but they're only up one. Holy Cross has found a way to hang in there, and offensive rebounds have really kept Colgate in the game. Impressive part for Holy Cross. They're doing it right there in front of the student section or part of the student section. They are going it after the football team, which is right there, literally maybe four feet behind the baseline. Robertson back in for Colgate. Amiel as well. Amiel's not a shooting threat, but he's a good facilitator of the offense. Four on the shot clock for Burns. Steps back, well short. And a chance again for Holy Cross to get back in front. And that time, no inside touches for Colgate, just perimeter passing. Green, bounce pass to Floyd, who finishes at the rim. Late rotation for Colgate, a little fatigue setting in there. Robertson just a step late. Nice pass there by Green. Jahiva Floyd into double figures with 10. A lot of standing around for Colgate. Raymond, the kick to Amiel. Seven on the shot clock for the gate. It's batted around. Again, Burns, late shot clock. Another offensive rebound. Tried to go inside, but the defensive player of the year in the league knocked it away. And Butler will back it out. Jahiva Floyd has been the difference in this game. Will Raymond had it. Great first step trying to get to the basket, but the shot blocking presence of Floyd's been the difference. Butler blocked by Bat, and he blocked it off of Butler's back. Java Floyd so good in this pick and roll. He screens, rolls green with a nice dish. And how about that left hand finish? His presence so good. And Colgate, a little extra help there. And, uh, Student section love that one. They're watching Colgate have a season high 16 offensive rebounds, but that also means you're missing a lot of shots. I think Colgate's got to come back with O'Brien and Swapshire here because they need more offensive threats. They've got Raymond with the ball in his hands, but Grandison doing a great job there defensively. That was fantastic by the freshman. Holy Cross defense been the story of the game in the second half. Grandison cuts to the basket. Raymond blocks it from behind. And Amiel's fouled by Floyd. You gotta love March basketball, right? Stay with the play, don't give up. Hustle, energy, effort, student sections. This game's got it all. What a fabulous league. Great atmosphere here this afternoon. I kinda don't want this game to end. Well, you still got time. And last year when you and I were together for the semifinals up at BU, we ended up getting two overtime. So, you know, nobody said how much time we got left. <laughs> we'll never get back to New York. <laughs> 9.20 to go in the ball game. Holy Cross up by one. Raymond getting some time on the bench. Swapshire's back in. Again, it's deep in the shot clock. Dana Bath, the left-handed shot, gets the bounce. Colgate back in front. He's their junkyard dog. He does a little bit of everything. Finishes with the left hand there. But I like the post pass. Go inside. Try to get something going to the basket for Colgate. Caleb Green has not been an offensive impact today. The freshman point guard who averages nine a game for Holy Cross. Jahiva Floyd though has. And an offensive foul. 
Just the second foul on Jahiva Floyd, but he barreled over Dana Bat. Hey, move your feet, move your feet, use your chest. You can't draw it up any better than that. Dana Bat with a basket and then a defensive stop. Crowd comes to life and Holy Cross looking to pick up here, a little 2-2-1. That is also the sixth team foul on Holy Cross. So Colgate, who is a 76% free throw shooting team, one of the top 30 in the nation, will be at the free throw line the rest of the ball game. And we got a long way to go, eight minutes here. I like Sean O'Brien in the game. How about Ferguson? Jack Ferguson, he's in for one thing, and that's his second three. Green is fouled by Ferguson on the drive. Just the third. How about Jack Ferguson in the corner, shoots this one from Indiana. Terrific follow through and finish, and they needed that one. Nice move by Matt Langle and staff. Well, we going to the bench a little bit, well, Jason. And we've been talking about the fact that Will Raymond has been their only three-point effort today. Ferguson's got two. Great inbound play, because Grandison got it right back and went right to the hoop. How about the athleticism of Holy Cross? This is going to be a team to be reckoned with for years to come in the Patriot League. And remember, this is a Holy Cross team that thought they would have Carl Charles, the six foot six junior, who was suspended in early February, and it's an ongoing investigation, possible NCAA rules violations. As Dana Bat is fouled on the floor. But it is a two point Colgate lead heading to the break. That is Luke Langle, the middle child of head coach Matt Langle. I don't know who's more excited, him or the football team, about maybe not having 6 a.m. practice, getting the extra half hour. Some Holy Cross, and Jahava Floyd, the leader, the defensive player of the year in the Patriot League. Well, and how about his offense, too? Because he's also got 10 points. He's also got two assists to go with what he does on defense. So he has been the facilitator because he is a guy who went from two points a game last year to 12 this year. And that last dunk that Holy Cross got was a pass by him, unselfish play. He really has improved. And speaking of improvement, Dana Bat has been that as well. The junior last year averaged one and a half points a game, one and a half rebounds a game. This year he's up that to seven and he has started every game this year for Colgate. You know, one of the things that's fabulous about the Patriot League, these unbelievable academic institutions, we're up here in the middle of central New York in five feet of snow, and we got two guys from, Indi we got two guys from Indiana making shots for Colgate. I love it. I think you and I have a different uh, interpretation of five feet of snow. <laughs> it was sunny. It was beautiful on the way in. The roads are clear. Yeah, that wasn't the case two days ago. Just inside the arc, and Grandison starting to heat up for Holy Cross. And he's starting to grow up. Boy, is he developing another terrific young player for Holy Cross. Third Crusader into double figures. He's got 11. He leads. Holy Cross scores. Floyd and Butler both have 10. It's going to be the team that can string some stops together here, get consecutive stops, try to get a quick run out on offense. Ferguson to his former high school teammate, Dana Bat. I mentioned it. We got guys from Indiana all over the place in this court. Pass, pass, finish. Dana Bat. Homestead High School in Fort Wayne, Indiana, represented really well in Hamilton. Back to Butler. Backs his way to the basket and finishes. Some of these young players for Holy Cross are growing up this afternoon. What an experience for them now playing on this big stage. You know, Colgate has not gotten much from Sean O'Brien. He has not scored. Swapshire's got just seven on three of 13 shooting. So they've done this and been able to do it without two of their top four scores. O'Brien's going to make a big shot before this game's over if Colgate's going to win. And Swapshire now one of ten from beyond the arc. Holy Cross twice in the second half has briefly taken the lead. And they've tied it again. And the whistle and the stop after the dunk, they let Jahiva Floyd tie his shoe. 
Dana Bat is, is upset here with his teammates because he helps on the slide. There's no help. swapshire has got to get over there and take that roll because Jahavid Floyd rolling to the basket. You got to get there early and, and be really active or else that's a dunk. Those lead changes, five of them all here except for one in the second half. Colgate led 22-9 midway through the first half. It has been a battle ever since. Colgate's got to come back with Will Raymond. They need another offensive threat. Seven on the shot clock. He's getting set to check back in, but Ferguson going one-on-one. -on -one. Throws it to Bat with two on the shot clock. He beats the buzzer, but it didn't hit the rim. A shot clock violation. And Raymond will check back in as we Take a look at the Patriot League tournament. We are down to the semifinals. Bucknell and BU coming up next from Bucknell. Immediately following us, the championship game Wednesday night on CBS Sports Network. And remember, it is at the site of the higher ranked team. So listen, if Holy Cross and BU both win, we'll be in BU on, on Wednesday. It is exciting. You got five minutes here to have an opportunity to go to the big dance. Benson's off. Back the rebound. His fifth. Will Raymond back in the game here for Colgate. Like to see him get a touch in that foul line area, see if he can get something going to the basket. Double on back. Defensive pressure. O'Brien and Butler to the floor to knock it away. Austin Butler has been all over the court. And there's seven on the shot clock. This is a tough kid. Watch him in here. Against the senior, hustle plays, and this is what it's going to come down to these last five minutes. Seven on the shot clock here for Colgate. And O'Brien's got it in his hands. He's fouled, and he worked his way to the free throw line. Seven on the shot clock, the crafty senior here. Not much going on. Got to find a way. Pat Benson moving his feet and hands and doesn't agree with the call. I think it's going to be a two. I think he was over the line and, and difficult. They're, they're going to go to the monitor to check this out to make sure it is. And, and listen, I know a lot of people criticize the amount of times officials go to the monitor. It's tied. 4.31 to go in the game. Checking to see if it's a two or a three. And for Sean O'Brien, we'll take a look here as well. He got that no, back. he got his back foot back. I was incorrect. Yeah, it originally looked like a two, but looks like a three. And it is going to be three free throws for Sean O'Brien. You know, all the officials are agreeing with me. They look back over here, they're agreeing with me. They're so happy well, to see Well, because they're over here now, yeah. Exactly. I like it better over here. Did you ever have that happen at Hofstra? disagree with an official? No, 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 the agreement part of it. Ha <laughs> happy to see you. Yeah, I, I agreed with all of them at, towards the end of my, my, my brief coaching career. Sean O'Brien, a near 84% free throw shooter. And you know, this has been a tough day for him in the fact that he hasn't scored until that free throw. But it was on senior day against Holy Cross on February 24th where he topped 1,000 points for his career. He is a career 39% three-point shooter. And he has helped them gain some momentum because he had three straight double-digit games coming into this one, including the 18 against Lafayette in the quarterfinals. I said a few minutes ago, if they're going to win, he's going to have to make a big shot. That may have been it. Drawing that three-point shot with seven on the shot clock expiring and making three free throws may be the difference. Colgate changes up the defense. They love to go 1-3-1 one, one out of the free throw, and there they go, Raymond up top. Big, long, and active. And you got the shorter Jordan Burns down on the baseline, and Raymond gets the steal. That's exactly where he's so good. Terrific move by Matt Langle. Off the main three throws by O'Brien. Go to the 1-3-1 one, one and get the steal. That in the post. Out to O'Brien with the head fake. Raymond for three. a real clean look, kind of a hurried three there. A little fatigue setting in for Raymond. Cross 
cross court to Butler for the tie. And O'Brien's got the clutch rebound. And for Colgate now, this is Sean O'Brien time. Senior had the basketball in his hands throughout his career. He's going to have to make a play, run some offense here as Holy Cross stays in this matchup zone, try to get a switch and an active, aggressive play to the basket. Neither coach has called a timeout here in the second half, 17 minutes in. Let him play. Burns the big triple. The freshman on a team with experience puts the gate back up six. Big bucket by the freshman. And Burns commits the foul. It's just the fourth on Colgate, but it's Holy Cross basketball. But Jordan Burns, a huge shot. How about Jordan Burns, the young fella from Texas? Ice water. Sponsored by Visit Myrtle Beach, home to world-class golf, sandy beaches, family attractions, and southern hospitality. And by the Patriot League, today's scholar-athletes, tomorrow's leaders. That is T.J. Hall leading the charge for the football team at the baseline. Junior linebacker who broke his leg, and they have been great. Mo, let's revisit the keys to the game. Well, value the basketball. 12 turnovers today for Holy Cross is why they're behind right now. And shoot the three for Colgate, seven for 29. But a couple big ones when they needed them here in the second half. They're going to keep shooting the three. For Holy Cross to get back in this game now, 20 on the shot clock. They're very good baseline out of bounds. Watch them try to get the ball into Floyd and look for the inbounder coming back in. Been very good throughout the game with this play. Colgate's in the bonus, so they'll shoot free throws on Holy Cross fouls. Just four called on the Raiders. And Holy Cross has come back a couple of different times. They've even taken the lead a couple of times here in the second half. Do they have it in them to get back one more time? Butler drives the lane. Help defense comes, and it's Colgate basketball. Raymond has not been great offensively in the second half, but the two steals and blocks has really been the difference here for Colgate. Approaching two minutes to go. Patriot League Championship game on the line. Burns, now it's time to go. And now he's fouled. It's the ninth on Holy Cross, so a one and one coming for Jordan Burns. You know, Will Raymond is so much taller and more athletic than you realize. And there you see his long arms. It was that play and the steal on the top of the 1-3-1 that really kind of propelled Colgate out here. And making free throws and taking care of the basketball is going to be the key for Colgate. If you're Holy Cross now, just under two minutes, there's plenty of time in this game. You don't have to panic and take a bad shot. You want to make sure your free throw box out here, you want to push. They always like to take some time off the clock, get the first good look, and then set your defense. Now, there's some confusion because one of the officials thought it was two shots. Holy Cross was trying to sub in, so on the two shots, you'd wait to the second, but it is just a one and one. And so they got the sub in, and that worked. And that's what Holy Cross needed. A missed free throw. Now going to take a little time, try to get something going to the basket with Floyd. It's Green on the drive. Tough floater. And a timeout taken by Bill Carmody. They've got two left. We'll take it with them. Four-point game with 1.44 to go. The League Championship game on the line here in Colgate. Where the Raiders lead Holy Cross 54-40 and coming up at 2.10 Eastern. That is when Bucknell and BU will tip from Pennsylvania. Immediately following us, Jason Knapp and Pete Gillen waiting to bring that to you. Now, Bill Carmody took the timeout. He's got two left. What's the strategy for him with 1.44 to go? Well, they got the drive to the basket. They have off the missed free throw. Then they call timeout, set their defense here. And the message is, hey, we're down four, plenty of time. 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. See if we get a steal. If we don't, sit down, guard through the possession, finish with a rebound. We got plenty of time. Any foul will send Colgate to the line for two free throws. And they are 11 of 12 today at the charity strike. Will Raymond's got to touch the basketball here if you're Colgate on offense. Swapshire. 
He has to hoist, and he has had an awful performance today from the floor. But effort! They call it a jump ball, and it'll stay with Colgate. The question, though, was Swapshire on the ba on the sideline? Well, we couldn't see it. It's kind of in front of us, but that's really been the difference. It's been batting the offensive rebounds, and terrific job. Now, he is laying out of bounds, but did they I blow he, the whistle first? Yeah, I think he calls the timeout right here. Oh, no timeout. Oh, jump ball. Oh, they called a jump ball before the play, before he went out of bounds. Yeah, it's right in front of us. We can't see with the uh, score clock there, but on that replay, it looks like they just called a jump ball. Again, bad shot by Swapshire, but great hustle to stay with it. Holy Cross is key here, is you've got to find a body and box out. Now, the stoppage here is the officials went over to the scorer's table to tell them to reset the shot clock to 28 seconds. Bill Carmody is demanding that they go over, and they look at this to see if he is out of bounds. We've had a great officiating crew today. Tim Kelly, Paul Fea, and Andrew Myra. And that is Paul Fea running over to the scorer's table. So one of the things that they are telling the coaching staff right now is that by rule, they cannot review that because the ball was not tipped. So they can't review whether or not he was out of bounds because it was not a tip ball to see whose possession it was. Tough shot there by Swapshire, not very good offense. But again, the hustle plays an effort. And here's where we're looking at. You see Paul there calling the jump ball before. And, and Caleb Green is pointing to the sideline. The Holy Cross his point guard is pointing and saying, hey, he's, he's laying out of bounds. But, but as Paul Fea called it, he called it, or at least he said, a jump ball before. And before, you see him call the jump ball before, I believe, he rolls over there. Yep. Good job by the official sorting out. 28 on the shot clock here. Holy Cross needs to play without fouling. Plenty of time left. Colgate wants to try to get something going to the basket. At least get to that foul line. Sean O'Brien's the guy that probably needs the ball in his hands. It's Raymond coming to get it with 12 on the shot clock. And he lost it, and Benson's whistled for the foul. And he was just told to settle down. Andrew Myra just came in and told him they'll cool it. He didn't give him a technical, but he told him to hold on a sec. Pat Benson's a tough kid. He's really a spark plug for this team. And you see the rip through there. From that angle, it looks like contact. The first angle might have looked like he lost the basketball. Going to come down to free throws and taking care of the basketball now. Benzin picked up his fourth foul. And remember, Colgate is a 76% free throw shooting team. And Raymond hits them both. Big free throws there for Colgate. They go to the 1-3-1, which has been their bread and butter. They almost get a steal. Green in the corner, Grandison. Floyd knocks it out of bounds off bat. Now this they can go to the monitor and review. And that's what they're gonna do. Floyd said he knocked it off of bat, and this because it's inside of two minutes, they can go over to the monitor and take a look. just came over here to give us an explanation. This one at least seems to be simple. I think they got that one right. They're going to obviously check every possession counts here. So little strategy for both sides while the officials are sorting through. Six point game for Colgate. You want your best. We see the play right here. I think that should be Holy Cross basketball. 50-50 call. Yeah, it's a tough call. They're going to look at it right here. I think that's going to go back to Holy Cross. From that angle, it looks like that touches the ball last. So Coach Carmody's talking offense and defense right now. If they get the ball back, baseline out of bounds where they've been very good. And if you're Colgate, Sean O'Brien needs to have the basketball in his hands as much as he can to Will Raymond to make free throws. Now remember, on the floor here, though, this was called, this was called Colgate basketball. So they have to have enough to overturn it. But I'm with you. I think that was last touched by Dana Bat. But they also want to make sure that the time is correct. So they're looking at both of those things here. So as we say, 50-50 ball, and there's some contact there that they'll let go. 
hustle play by both teams. Maybe a foul by Floyd, but at that point, I think it touched off bad last. So they're also going to adjust the clock. So it says 45-7. It is Holy Cross basketball. So they change it to the correct call. And they're going to add 5 tenths of a second to 46-2. So they've added half a second left. And it's Holy Cross basketball. This is a huge possession for the Crusaders. 30 on the shot clock. Colgate got to protect the basket. Don't want to foul a jump shooter. Right to Jahiva Floyd. Clutches in midair and hits. So good baseline out of bounds underneath. Sean O'Brien needs to keep the ball in his hands. Well, and Holy Cross follows the best free throw shooter on Colgate's roster. With 40 seconds more, do they have time to get it out of his hand? Well, you want to try to get a quick steal if you can, maybe a trap, and if not, you want to reach in and try to extend the game. Nice job by Holy Cross, out of bounds underneath. He's three for three today. Well, Colgate hasn't shot the ball from three well today. Seven of 30. But they have made up for it by going 13 of 14 at the free throw line. Watch Colgate now go to that 1-3-1, which will force them to take some time off the clock, and they do go back to it. Using a lot of clock. Grandison, tough shot. He fouled, and he hits. Jacob Grandison, the freshman from Oakland. I mentioned it before, the one thing you don't want to do in this situation is foul a jump shooter, and that's exactly what they do right there. A two doesn't necessarily hurt you. A three-point opportunity puts Holy Cross back into this game to try to make it a one-possession game. A 73% free throw shooter. He's two for two at the line today. One possession game, and a timeout taken by Holy Cross. The freshman bringing the Crusaders back in. Can they get a stop or a steal on the other side? I am uh, very sorry. And we're gonna get the phone, his phone, uh, out of you. The important thing is that uh, we're gonna make you better. Okay, here's how to make butter. Pour two-thirds cup cold heavy cream. Snickers satisfies. While our most elevated models can be simulated, nothing compares to the real thing. Experience the Command Performance Sales Event for yourself, now through April 2nd. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Jason Horowitz, Coach Mo Cacera, spot in the Patriot League Championship game on the line. It's a one-possession game out of the timeout. How long can you try and choose who you're following? You've got to foul right away if you're Holy Cross. If you're Colgate, Coach Langle said, go meet the basketball. Any problems, you call a timeout right away. That's Ferguson. He's the freshman, and Burns is a freshman. Back out to Raymond, and that's who they foul. Now they had a chance to foul Jack Ferguson, who's about a 70% free throw shooter. Jordan Burns is a 76% free throw shooter. Instead, they foul Will Raymond who is an 80% free throw shooter. And you can kind of throw the percentages out a little bit right now. If I was Holy Cross, I would have fouled Ferguson, the freshman, just coming back off the bench. Back to a two possession game. Jordan Robertson, the senior, back in for defense. Ferguson back to the bench. Well, Raymond today has got 20. He missed. Holy Cross, will they settle for three or go for the quick two? Benton lost the ball, and Floyd commits the foul. Was he fouled? He thought so. Well, it looks like he lost it right there. From that angle at the end, it looks like he lost it. Physical play here at the end of the game. Hey, 
the officials are going back over to the monitor. They're going to check the clock. They're going to take a look at the clock. It's set at 15.8 right now. When did Jahiva Floyd commit the foul? And I think that's a really good call by the officials. Benson loses the basketball there, trying to create something. Probably another second, maybe. Probably another, maybe, yep. Maybe a second and a half. 17.2, maybe, yeah, I would say about 17.1 or two, they might get back on there. Depends when the whistle was blown there. Yeah, probably about 17 seconds. And they're gonna come over here and let us know. Tim Kelly's John over here. Seven. They're putting it back to 17 seconds. It's when the foul is called. And so like we said, right around 17, so that's what it is. They add 1.2 to the game clock. Two shots on every foul for Colgate. And Matt Langle's squad, who is trying to get to the Patriot League Championship game for the first time in 10 years. Now Raymond just missed his last one, but he's got two shots coming. If Colgate makes this free throw, they like to go back to the 1-3-1. Watch them do that, because what that also does is take some time off the shot clock, hard to operate for Holy Cross. Holy Cross needs to go quick now, need to push and get a quick shot. Makes them both. Still a two possession game. Holy Cross has made five threes. They need a couple more. Colgate goes man to man. That's Fall. High Archer. Rebound Swapsher. And he's fouled with 7.6 to go. And Colgate looking like it's going to get to the Patriot League Championship. The chant from the student section is start the buses. And Swapshire hits. Three possession game with seven seconds to go. Now, remember, Virginia won a game the other day when they were down four with 0 0.9 and didn't have the basketball. Anything can happen in college basketball, but this seven point seconds for Colgate is the culmination of a fabulous season and an unbelievable program built by Matt Angle. Caleb Green, no, it's tipped out. And that's it! For the first time since 2008, Colgate is out of the Patriot League Championship game. And they have stormed the court here in Hamilton. The Raiders 19 wins, a school record. And this is their 13th home win, also a Colgate record. And so the gate advances to Wednesday night's championship game on CBS Sports Network. If BU wins at Bucknell, they will host. If Bucknell wins, they will hit the road. We'll talk with Coach Matt Langle when we return as the celebration gets going.